This is the part that you hit the ball with. This is the strong, look at the size of this muscle as compared to this. So as you start down, you've got to rotate that. See how I'm rotating that? And it's not difficult to do. You just stand there and you don't do that. Now I'll show you the biggest fault with the weekend golf, although you weekend golfers, are, you play five times a week. <laughs> First time I played with Arnold Palmer was in 19... 57 at Tamashanta in Chicago and the wind's blowing and he takes the grass, throws it up in there and he doesn't look. So I said, why do you do that? He said, all the good players do it, so I do it. <laughs> so, the big, so, but the worst fault in golf, the worst, is here, which is, I would say, 30% of weekend golfers do hang back. Or they give the phony swing, you know, they go, the ball's gone. So we've got to get you to do this, see? See, I do four times a week, 1,300 sit-ups, and without boasting at 80, this is like a plank, see that? Because you've got to get that. That's all, if you rotate, your hands have to follow. Because this is so strong, your hands have no option. They just automatically follow with speed. So the faster you can rotate, the more club head speed you get. You find all these different backswings. Bobby Jones took the club in here. Jack Nicholas stood there, cocked his head back, took his hands way up in the air with his elbow fly right, elbow, great ad for right guard. Hand right up in the air like this. Then you found Ben Hogan who had the flat swing. Then you had Doug Sanders who had the short back swing. All these different, then you like Lee Trevino, if he's aiming at that 100 yard sign, he aims at that green, like this. And Betty hits it. And it's the second best striker of a ball I've seen. Ben Hogan was the best, but Trevino is the second best. But he only aimed over there, but he was also talking. He'd say, during a tournament, he'd say, you know, my wife, he's getting ready to hit. She says, my wife lost her credit card and somebody else found it. Thank God, because they can never spend what she spends. And he's hitting. While he's playing, <laughs> this guy's crazy. But you've got to make sure with all the swings and the variety of swings. Arnold Palmer aimed right, Trevino aimed left. All these different swings, but the one thing they all did is from here, from the top of their backswing, that left hip rotated. You want to improve your game? Practice from 100 yards in. Jordan Spieth doesn't hit the ball anywhere near like Rory, Adam Scott or Jason Day. Not in the same league, but he beats them. He's number one in the world because golf is played from a hundred yards in. Bunker shots, chipping and putting. That's how you lower your handicap. Go to your pro, have lessons on your short game. Who's a 16 handicap here? Somebody? 17, 18. Okay, two 18s. You and I play tomorrow. You hit every drive, every second shot, I take over. You're a four handicap. Yeah. But, let's go and play tomorrow. I hit every drive, and you take over, you're a 16 handicap. So that's the best way to explain the importance of the short game. If you ever go to Lytham and St. Anne's, <clears throat> go to the 17th hole, and there's a plaque in the bunker. And I stood there in awe. Because then you go in the clubhouse, and you see the club that he used, and it's like a frying pan head, and this thick shaft, and he put it on that green from that spot there. I'd like to see Tiger do it today. He'd do it, but he'd have to put his best shot on it. I mean, it's absolutely how, how that man was so, so good. And yet, and yet, this is the sad thing. If Bobby Jones had to go today to these modern day teachers, they'd all change his swing. And he had one of the greatest swings, maybe the greatest swing that ever lived. But his club did at the top of the swing, you see. His club pointed to the right, see that? And that's what all the old Scottish pros did, which was phenomenal. But these guys want to change it now and put it over here, which is poison. And that's what happened to Tiger Woods. That was the demise, that was the start of Tiger's problem. He had the club perfectly on line there. He goes to lessons after winning the US Open by 15 shots, and he started, the guy gets the club over here. Gone. Watch the, watch the, uh, that's, there it is. 
Watch how that club, you can see it at impact. The club is going through the ball. Watch it impact. Watch how that club is going through the ball. See that? No deceleration. Every shot you play in golf is acceleration. A bunker is not, it's whew. light the match. When you get in a bunker, watch this. Light the match. But watch this club now. Watch how the club goes through the ball. Watch. Well, I must say, golf never ceases to give you enjoyment. Huh? What a game. What a game. Now, this time I'm going to rotate a little faster, okay? Keep the club nice and smooth. Now, that's gone about 10 yards further. It's a little boring, doesn't it? <laughs> I noticed you moved out the way when I hit there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I often put my mother-in-law right on the ground there. <laughs> I, I used to say to her, come on, Granny, <laughs> show them the confidence you have in me. She'd lie on the ground there and I'd have a practice swing and I'd... So <laughs> And now I just want you to watch this time, nice and smooth, and then watch the rotation. <coughs> well now there's six drives that never went one foot off line. Did I tell you last night, David? Now, just feel that. Psst. <laughs> and honestly, when I played my first open and I went to Millfield, there were daisies on the fairway. Not green like that, white little daisies. You can see there are a couple of yellow daisies, see them? And there, see those little daisies? Look at these little daisies. Here they are. Here they are. Look at them. See them? Right there. The whole fairway was that. They didn't have a mower that cut it like this short. They raked the bunker. Sid Scott lost the open at, to Peter Thompson at St Andrews on the 10th hole. The 11th hole, the par 3. Put his ball in the bunker and the guy in front of him left this hole. We raked the bunker with our feet like this. We got out like... Now you've got a man walking around with you. <laughs> See? Now you arrive at a tournament, there's a courtesy car. You go to the tournament, free phone calls. Free food. There's a new driver in your lock every day. Four dozen balls. And I got in the first time I played at St. Andrews in 1955, the guy walked on the tee and said, here are your three balls for the week. 